Come on, you're getting a thing about this. Just get in and out and away before she even knows we're there. Come on. the haunted look. Are you having personal difficulties? Your marriage not working? Have you tried singing together? Not enough people sing together. Surprise her tonight with a little Ivan and Vela. Dear me. Is that the time? Superiors, that for the next few days all my mail should be redirected to the QE2. The QE2? <laughs> I don't think it is. have been informed in writing, of course, but I'd be pleased if you'd give them a little reminder. But we really can't. The QE2, my husband and I, a little cruise. <laughs> right, Mrs. Bucket. <laughs> You will remember the name of the ship we're cruising on in an outer cabin with full facilities and panoramic views. The QE2! <laughs> so loud! Good heavens! People think I'm trying to broadcast it. <laughs> Terrible night. I know. I was there. <laughs> I blame them crisps. Egg roll and dumpling flavour. <laughs> it's not natural. It was all they had. I was dreaming about black holes. You look up at the sky and you think, that's nice. Little do you realise it's full of black holes. <laughs> they can suck you in, compress all your matter. It could do with a bit. <laughs> oh, nice. Look, if it's going to upset you, you have to stop watching Open University. <laughs> Father's dead. <laughs> no, he isn't. He just goes like that. Oh, great. I'm awake all night and your father sleeps like he's dead. <laughs> I would have liked to say. 
second opinion. Well, somebody ought to come and see if he's dead. He's not usually dead. <laughs> Is anybody coming? Well, don't look at me. He's your father. <laughs> Besides, somebody has to think of the philosophical implications of a universe full of black holes. <laughs> speak with your editor. I suppose he's too busy with sex and violence. <laughs> Look, I have an interesting news item for him. News or features? Well, <laughs> I suppose it's a little bit of both, really. Yes, I expect the headline to read something like Local Celebrity on QE2 Cruise. Mm. Well, if you say it's features, I suppose it's features. Yes. Personally, I should have thought there was a little news value there as well. Though I realise it's not quite as earth-shattering as if one were being launched into outer space. <laughs> what do you mean, what local celebrity? Myself, of course. <laughs> If you care to make inquiries, you'll find that I am famous locally for my candlelight suppers. <laughs> I have a son at university with a brilliant future, and my program of sung highlights from Rosemary never fails to bring the over 60s to their feet. <laughs> so how much more do you want? Hmm? If I were the victim of gross indecency, you'd have been round here quicker than a split infinitive. <laughs> Illiterate hack. <laughs> it's all right. Father's not dead. <laughs> I told you he wasn't dead. I know about dead. When you live with Onslow, you get a very good thing. <laughs> oh, nice. Anyway, what makes you so sure he isn't dead? Well, because he's been asking for bacon, eggs, sausage and fried bread. <laughs> Could be he's bluffing. <laughs> That's what we had for breakfast on our honeymoon. <laughs> That's what you had. I needed a lie-in. It's time you two were up. You promised to go and do Bruce's dreams. I didn't mean at the crack of dawn. Drains are something you have to come up on gradually. He has the same attitude these days to his love life. <laughs> Don't you, my darling? <laughs> Listen, I can't stay here playing about. I've got to see to Bruce's drains. That's when you really know you're married. When you start coming in second to drains. <laughs> Richard, I want you to make sure that all the porters take particular care of my set of matching executive luggage with the genuine leather embellishments and initials. <laughs> we really need all these suitcases. I will not be outdressed by the other passengers. No, people on these luxury liners do not skimp on luggage. No, we're in no danger of a skimp. Oh, Richard, it's been my dream to cruise on a wonderful ship. Do you remember those newsreels of the Hollywood stars arriving at Southampton in furs and mountains of luggage? Oh, I'll answer that. It may be the captain wanting to welcome us aboard. <laughs> do, they, do they do that? Well, not 
to everyone, dear. He hasn't the time. <laughs> need all our spare cash. <laughs> I wanted to speak to you, Sheridan, dear, before we depart, in case Mummy sinks. <laughs> well, I want you to be very stern with the Air Sea Rescue people. <laughs> yes. Make it clear to them, dear, what a loss I would be to the cultural life of the community. <laughs> And tell them if I'm cast adrift at night, I shall be wearing my hat with the antique Diamante cluster. So I shall sparkle quite brilliantly in their searchlights. Yes. But if I have to be winched up by helicopter, please would they provide trousers? Do you think she's really safe? Who? The QE2. Yes, well, of course she's safe. I she think she's probably one of the safest vessels afloat. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> Bound to be really. Emmy? Seriously contemplating her sinking? <laughs> no, 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 not really sinking. Maybe the odd female passenger lost overboard. Amy, <laughs> I mean, with a life jacket and everything, and an uninhabited island waiting for her. Oh, of course. Of course, I'd hoped that she'd be picked up safely. But in about 20 years' time. <laughs> I wish I could afford a new car. I wish we could afford this one. <laughs> we should have told our heart since we were going. I thought we decided we wouldn't. You decided we wouldn't? I'm the breadwinner. I have to make these executive decisions. <laughs> she's family. You can't just pretend she's not there. I always think it's worth a try. <laughs> anyway, she can't complain. You left father in good hands. You think she'll really think our rose qualifies as good hands? All right. We've left your father in good legs. <laughs> and so... Do you think this little holiday will bring us closer together? <laughs> You want to get when I did Bruce's drains yesterday? I let you help me with the rods, didn't I? When I said we ought to do things together more, I didn't mean drains. Daisy, we've had our differences, but when you get right down to it, there isn't anyone I'd rather have helping me with the drains. <laughs> That's really sweet. You always were a smooth talker when you wanted to be. <laughs> Travelling light, Richard. <laughs> oh, no, it's too much. Damn good job you're not going by air. <laughs> by air? 
I'm beginning to wonder if the ship's big enough. <laughs> I do hope you have a splendid time, Richard. Thanks, Liz. Ready for the off? Uh, she's almost ready. She's taking endless trouble. She remembers the newsreels of how people used to dress for luxury liners. <laughs> Just a coincidence. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear friends. <laughs> Emma, be brave. I shall return. <laughs> oh, dear. I do fluster him so. <laughs> I believe I disturb him very powerfully. <laughs> Why don't you enjoy a few days of high-class luxury at sea? Our fellow passengers hand-picked from Debrett. <laughs> Leisurely drive to Southampton, and then we'll be piped aboard. I wouldn't bank on the piping bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps not, dear. They'll probably be too busy bedecking our cabin. Something called a traffic jam. There's no need to take that tone, Richard. After all, we are on holiday. I'm sorry. It's all that, dear. It's probably roadworks. On a Saturday? Oh, well, I suppose some people work at the weekend. By the way, I've been meaning to ask you. With nothing else to do at the moment, Richard. I am a captive audience, so ask me anything you like. Do you think your father's <laughs> starting to lurk in the bushes again? <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Look, take that next turning. But if we do that, we don't know where we'll finish up. I'll work out a route, dear. Leave it to me. Under the... Are you sure this is the right way? Have faith, Richard. We'll be there in no time. <laughs> oh, come on. How can they say it's quicker by train? This is the right way. Well, yes, of course I am, dear. Wait a minute. We're in Surrey now, and we're going down to Hampshire. Yes, that's right. 
But you've got the map open at Norfolk. Hmm? <laughs> King's Lynn. You're supposed to slow down when you go through one of these. <laughs> Why weren't you concentrating, dear? I'm not gonna <laughs> I think water's got into the system. Huh? What does that mean? It means that we're stuck. Don't be silly, Richard. We can't be stuck. We have an appointment with the QE2. We'll have to go and get some help. For the water. Well, it can't be that deep. Take your shoes and socks off. Roll your trousers up. Come on, dear. Quick's the word, sharp's the motion. <laughs> Decorum, please. As we fit someone with a reservation for a quality cruise. <laughs> a little faster, Richard, please. Close the door, dear. There's a terrible draft. <laughs> I wonder if it's worth trying to find a telephone. What for? To inform the QE2 that we may be a little late. <laughs> I don't think so, Hyacinth. Left or right? Hmm? Um... <laughs> left! This can't be right. It's a shortcut. <laughs> well, of course we're not lost. We're here. Well, we can't be there because that's a B road. Well, then this must be the B road. This isn't even a road. Richard. Richard, I hope you're not going to be in this unreasonable mood for the entire holiday. <laughs> now, please, drive on. I'm sure you'll find we come to the road we need. show. Oh, no. Oh, it'll be fun, dear. Singing, dancing, a touch of comedy. No luck. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's obvious to me what's happened, dear. You've taken the wrong turning. <laughs> Get back in the car and turn round. There's not enough room to turn round. We're at the end of the universe. And contrary to all expectations, it's extremely narrow. Oh, what a fuss men do make sooner than admit their inner. Turn round in the field, dear. You have 
to get out and push. You have to get out and push. Me? There's no one else about. But I mean, what do I do? I've never pushed anything in my life. There's a first time for everything. But the... Out you go, Hyacinth. This is an emergency. with the map reading. We got stuck in some water, bogged down in the field, <laughs> took the scenic route, did you? <laughs> Sorry. Well, we had a bit of a hold up on the motorway, but um, it soon cleared. How nice for you. Half ahead, Captain. Half ahead. Go that tiny, please. Yes, sir. Bridge. Uh, no, madam, I'm afraid we cannot go back for you. I'm sorry, Mr. Shep, but I'm afraid it's not our fault that you were late. <laughs> All I can suggest is you try and catch us up. Now listen to me, my good man. Important as I am in local circles, I have not yet risen to the level where I can walk on water. <laughs> well, it certainly sounds like I managed to uh, get through here. 
Uh, uh, what I meant was you could fly to Copenhagen and uh, join us when the ship pulls in there. Oh, what a wonderful idea. That is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> nicer window seats, please. Preferably overlooking one of the engines. Then I can keep an eye on it for the captain. <laughs> My husband and I will be met by the QE2. <laughs> there we are, madam. Row two, seats B and C, overlooking the starboard engine. Thank you. <laughs> Come along, Richard. You haven't time for chatting with the porter. Actually, madam, I am a dentist on holiday. I'm just giving this poor man a hand with all this luggage. Well, it's very kind of you. And he appears to have one piece of baggage too many. <laughs> Could you ask our pilot to go faster and land a little earlier? I'm afraid not, madam. My husband would tip him handsomely. <laughs> no. Excuse me. Richard, do stop being so economical in public. <laughs> Can I ask you some questions about your luggage? Yes, of course. Isn't it smart? I expect you want to know where I bought it. Do they belong to you? Do I look like the sort of person who'd use other people's suitcases? <laughs> Did you pack them personally? I would never allow anybody else to touch my private belongings. <laughs> have you left them unattended at all? No, should I have done. <laughs> Has anyone approached you and asked you to carry anything through on their behalf? Through what? <laughs> Do you have anything electrical or battery operated? Oh, yes. We have a television set, a washing machine, a liquid dyes. Thank you, madam. I won't keep you a moment. Over there looks nice. We'll wait there. 
Bring the cases over, Richard. <laughs> Yes. Now, guard this luggage. This has got to be the world's most expensive luggage. You go and find some nice Swedish person who will provide us with a continental breakfast. Well, why would I want a Swedish person? This is Copenhagen. We're in Denmark. <laughs> oh, they're all the same, dear. It's all Scandinavia. <laughs> Don't say that when anyone's listening. This is a proud nation. These people are Danes. Hmm? Danes? Danes, yes, a very old seafaring nation. Danes? Aren't they the ones who used to attack us in the Dark Ages? <laughs> raping and pillaging? They're the ones, so don't go calling them Swedes. I insist you stay here and guard me from these Danes. <laughs> and to keep our spirits up, we shall sing, Richard. No. no. I'll lead off and you catch me up. No. <laughs> Britannia, Britannia rules the Danes. Britain never, 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 never shall be saved. She's come. Hmm? We're at the wrong dock. Oh, no. How are we going to get over there with all this luggage? We need some transport. We need a taxi. Taxi! Taxi! <laughs> executive luggage with the genuine leather embellishments and initials. I wouldn't dare. Dear. Oh, where's my luggage? Uh, it's in the capable hands of a team of porters. <laughs> Luxury at last, Richard. It's all been worthwhile, dear. But after this, we're going to have to cut down on things we can't afford. Mm -hmm. Like Sheridan. <laughs> what a wonderful relief this is after our narrow escape from the Danes. Well, I need a bath and bed. Not yet, dear. Yeah. Go and find one of those nice sailor people and ask them to present the captain with our compliments and our apologies for missing dinner with him last night. <laughs> Captain's table. Certainly. I wrote to him personally with a list of my dietary requirements. <laughs> and 
return invitation to one of my candlelight suppers. <laughs> Richard, I know you're tired, dear. But I want you to go and find out exactly where they keep the first-class lifeboats. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to sink just now as we're still at the quayside. Oh, be prepared, Richard. In the event of an emergency, I'd hate anything dreadful to happen. Such as stumbling in the dark into a second-class lifeboat. <laughs> Oh, where are your binoculars? Why would I need my binoculars? Well, it gives a more seaman-like effect, dear. You can look for things, icebergs and things. I'm sure the captain has a lookout. He won't object to a little help. Do fetch your binoculars, dear. Try to look more like a descendant of Sir Francis Drake. <laughs> Francis Drake? With a beard, you'd look very like him. I've often thought so. Close the door, dear. I'm going to change. <laughs> it took you an hour and a half to decide to wear that. I think it's more for afternoons. You should have told me it was more for afternoons. Or should I say eight bells? Hell's bells will be more. <laughs> I'll wait upstairs. Richard! It's not upstairs, dear. It's on deck. Well, whatever it is, I'll be up there looking for icebergs and growing a beard. And this is where we shall be dining at the captain's table this evening. I shouldn't pin too many hopes on that. Oh, which reminds me, I must apologize to him for missing his ship at Southampton. <laughs> I'll explain to him it wasn't my fault. <laughs> it was more yours, really, for getting stuck in that field. <laughs> I don't think you'll get to see the captain. They don't allow passengers on the bridge. Oh, surely, Richard. Once he knows you're a descendant of Sir Francis Drake. <laughs> I'm sorry, madam, but this is uh, off-limits to passengers. the way they guard him. What have they got to hide? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, Richard, you don't suppose they've lost the captain? Well, I mean, they might have left him on the dockside at Southampton. Oh, good Lord, who's staring? I don't think they'd leave the captain him behind. They left me. <laughs> we'll have to keep a close eye open this evening. And if the captain's missing, I shall institute inquiries. 
You can search the ship. <laughs> Good job you brought those binoculars, dear. Oh, Richard. We're going to enjoy every moment of this cruise. Now, what shall I wear? <laughs> Part of your cruise with his prize, man. First thing I've ever won. You won me. Him from Arnold Street kept coming second, though, a few times, didn't he? The engine room was fascinating. I had an old Dillman that used to gollop fuel like that. It was odd. So clean. You must have a good daily help. We have quite a few, actually. Uh, this way. I bet even your eyes seem to be hard pushed to find a mark. I thought engine rooms were full of sweaty men with dirty hankies. No, that's the betting shop. Can I open them now? Not yet, dear. I'll tell you when. <laughs> this strikes me as odd, I mean, I'm on the QE2. I've got a cabin with a view. And here I am with my eyes closed. <laughs> With my eyes closed. That's a novelty. There. <laughs> well, you can turn round now, dear. <laughs> and open your eyes, Richard. Oh, the outfit. Mm. Have you changed again? <laughs> Richard, I expect you to notice these things, dear. Now, tell me, is it suitable? I mean, does it give the right impression? <laughs> well, give me a clue. What impression are we looking for? Experience foreign traveller, dear. I'd hate to look like someone who wasn't used to being on the QE2. <laughs> now, does it give the impression <laughs> that I'm taking all this in my stride? I think that I was happier with my eyes closed. <laughs> Is there anything else I can check? I could do with learning a few knots. What do you want knots for? I could tie father to the bed on his off days. I thought you did. He gets loose. You should have told me. I'd have helped you. I did tell you. You took no notice. I must have been busy. You were watching telly. Well, they are. I was busy. <laughs> well, then, uh, if there's nothing else you'd like to see, if you'll excuse me, I shall return to my duty. Uh, well, there is one thing, Squire. I've always wanted to see the inside of a lifeboat. Oh. Right. Uh, this way. I did show enthusiasm. You didn't. You showed no enthusiasm. I tried to show enthusiasm. Give me one more chance, Hyacinth. I'll enthuse it to death. <laughs> you hated it. No, I wouldn't say hated. I again say hated. <laughs> well, I hope I've now found something you approve of. I love you haven't even looked at it yet. I 
just knew instinctively that, that I, I would like it. <laughs> It's bigger than you think. Listen who's talking. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You're wanted in the right room. All right, thank you. Will you be all right up there? All right. Right. I'll join you again in a minute. Days, you want to come up here and have a look? I'm not coming up there. This is not the kind of skirt you can climb ladders in. Not that you've even noticed. Now don't start that again. One whiff of salt air and you go bananas. <laughs> I thought a cruise was supposed to be romantic. It's not compulsory. <laughs> I knew you were wrong. We should have turned left. No, we did turn left. Perhaps you'll follow my directions in future. I was following them. You said turn left. This must lead to a deck. to be a stowaway. <laughs> are, are you absolutely sure? They were hiding in a lifeboat. How else would Onslow gain access to the QE2? Perhaps he's won some money on the horses. Oh, Onslow never wins on the horses. You've seen the way he dresses. Does he look as if he wins on the horses? <laughs> the horses dress better than Onslow. <laughs> Well, what's he wearing now? Well, I mean, he looks quite smart at the moment. He's trying to bluff his way through, trying to look like a passenger. <gasps> oh, but my poor sister, <laughs> sleeping in a lifeboat, <laughs> cowering like some criminal on this magnificent ship. At this very moment, probably hiding in some forgotten corner of the bilges. <laughs> On the floor. I brought the black negligee. Black <laughs> negligee. You never know when it might come in handy. Now I know what they mean by those in peril on the sea. We must find them where? In here. And once they're safely in here, you must go to the purser, explain the situation and pay their fares. Pay their fares? <laughs> you must find a cabin for Daisy at least. Personally, I wouldn't object if they clapped Onslow in irons. They still do that. They ought to in his case. <laughs> that must change, dear. You mean that you've got some 
around especially for searching for stowaways. You must alter our appearance, Richard. I don't wish to be recognized in the company of stowaways. Now, have you got something that you could use as a disguise? Well, perhaps if I tried to look unmarried, maybe that'd do the trick. <laughs> Onslow. What I can't understand is why would Onslow want to stow away on the QE2? Well, I expect Daisy drove him to it. Perhaps she was jealous of us. Poor demented Daisy. After a lifetime's neglect, she wanted that moment in the sun. And if she keeps staying away, she's going to get a moment in the sun, the star, the daily mirror, the Richard, mirror of the world. There must be no publicity, dear. It would decimate attendance at my candlelight suppers, and Sheridan would be appalled. Now, look, <laughs> disguise yourself, dear. We have work to do.
that sort of thing. We haven't got the time, let alone the money. <laughs> Remember, Richard, this is where we shall be dining at the captain's table this evening. I don't think I'll have the breath. to which, had we not been chasing stowaways, we would most certainly have been invited. Oh, and I have the perfect outfit for it. Now, why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> oh, and it's very elegant too, Richard. It would have been the perfect setting for my pink two-piece with the magazine brooch. <laughs> No, if we took the time to look, it's really quite beautiful out there. I believe I could get used to this, going places and not having to drive. Not that I ever do drive, I just steer and uh, follow instructions. <laughs> the matter? <laughs> Have you got a fly in your throat? Are there any flies? I don't think there are any flies. <laughs> what is it? They're in there. Somehow they'd bluff their way into the captain's cocktail party. <laughs> I must say, he gets away with it, old Onslow. We have to get them out of there before the captain realizes they're stowaways. <laughs> escort me from the captain's cocktail party. Well, you were making funny gestures. If I'm not funny, I was trying to attract my sister's attention. Uh, you see what the trouble was? In this jogging outfit, they were unable to tell that I was suitable material for the captain's cocktail party. <laughs> It's time 
for more diplomatic maneuvers. Oh, no. What have you got in mind now? I shall appeal to the captain personally, throw myself on his mercy. I shall explain to him that my sister has lapses of common sense. Does she? She married Onslow, didn't she? <laughs> no, I shall tell him, dear, that you will pay Onslow and Daisy's fares. With what? And in return for the captain's silence and discretion, I hope to be able to repay him. I perhaps could organize a little concert for him. Oh, I could give my program of sung highlights from HMS Pinnifor. <laughs> I think you'll find that they have professional entertainers on board. Oh, yes, dear, but there's nothing quite like the freshness of the amateur approach. I shall speak to the captain. Well, where are you going to get to the captain? At dinner this evening, dear. Now we must change. Come along. Uh, yeah. Sir? Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Bouquet. Just one moment, please, madam. Are you sure you're in this dining room, madam? This is reserved for first-class passengers. I think you'll find you should be in the Mauritania restaurant. No, but there, I mean, there, there must be some mistake. Oh, excuse me. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you very much. Let's not debate it now. Look, there are some places at the captain's table. Those are reserved for the captain's guests, madam. Oh. Here they come now. Doing pretty well for stowaways. We've got to find out what's going on, Richard. Can we have dinner first? You can do what you like, dear. I've lost my appetite. You somehow have to contact Daisy and Onslow as soon as you've eaten. What do you mean, officially? Your brother-in-law has won first prize in a newspaper competition. Yeah. Two tickets for this cruise with all the trimmings. <laughs> Why didn't they say something? Why didn't they tell us? Onzo said he didn't want to make us jealous. You should see their cabin. It is magnificent. What, what you, what you, it is really luxurious. I don't want to know. Champagne, I don't want to know. flowers. I don't want They're to being know. treated like film stars. All right, all right, all right. You want to dance? Hmm? I don't think so, thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
before we go on to the next dance, allow me to introduce you to a very special gentleman. A gentleman who entered a competition in the national newspapers and was clever enough, or lucky enough, <laughs> to win the first prize. That first prize, of course, was a luxury cabin for two and luxury VIP treatment on this very cruise. So a nice big round of applause, if you will, for Onslow and his lovely wife, Daisy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please take your partners for an excuse me. And Onslow and Daisy, why not put on a happy face? <laughs> This person chap came up to the cabin and said we're on the captain's table. And I thought, blimey, I mean, you win a competition, you get a luxury cruise, and then they expect you to eat with the crew. 